When it comes to the future, people used to say seeing is believing, but they can't say that anymore. The videos you're looking at right here, they might appear real, but the people, the places, nothing in those is real. They don't exist. They were all created by an artificial intelligence program called Sora, which developed these clips with nothing more than a one sentence prompt. Futurist Nicholas Babington joins us with more on this. Nicholas, or Nick, thanks for coming in today. It's good to be here, yeah. So, Sora's not alone. Google's working on its own platform called Lumiere. Uh, there's a New York startup called Runway that's developing a sophisticated video editing model. How far along are these video programs at this point? We've seen the chatbots, yeah. now it's video bots. You, you, you gotta remember, we're, we're decades into this technology, like technology and in, the encoding of, of digital imagery. So this is accretive, so it's layers and layers and layers of technology on top of each other to create a new world. And, and this is just another layer. You know, the, the ability to change scenes or to do certain things, it's gonna be actually a fairly powerful capability. You know, some people are hyping up to be everything. Right. This is gonna be something that's something in the mix of like a wider toolkit for creatives out in the world. I mean, someday I'm gonna say, here's a picture of my kid, can you yeah. make an episode of The Mandalorian with my kid in it? And it's gonna be possible for it to just kick that out. We're not there yet, yeah. because this technology has flaws. And actually, this I've been looking forward to this uh, for a while here. So. If you take a close look, you can start to see some problems. Why don't you walk through some of these videos we're looking at here and tell me about some of the some of the problems where AI is having trouble rendering Well, the, the thing is, I mean, there, there, there's multiple parts of like scenes and the complex sort of nature of the mise-en-scene. You know, how things are particularly looking. You know, the, the morphing of one fox into another, those sort of the blurred lines between things. You know, the, the, the strange uh, view of, of like a cat's paw or yeah. something like that. I mean, this is just like the glitches in the matrix, right? And we kind right. of, we kind of, we don't see that. We, we've seen stuff recently around technology causing all sorts of international calamity with Kate Middleton and whatever, oh, right? And oh, pictures. Oh, oh. But like, this is just, I kind of like it. I kind of like that there's a digital artifact of weirdness in the world. And, and if we leave that in, maybe that becomes something that's a cultural, uh, culturally relevant part of a new glitchy world. Oh yeah. yeah, so we get nostalgic for the old, good old funny nose on the person in the bed getting attacked yeah, by the cat. Well, you know, you know, Neo in the Matrix, oh, was that the same black cat? And like, it's, it's like we're already seeing sort of glitches in, in, in the world and out on the streets. So why don't we have something interesting and lots of Easter eggs in films? We're already seeing it today in, in, in modern, modern cinema. So I think that this is really interesting from the fact that we can progress, make mistakes, have them there, and it to be cultural, culturally iconic in uh, the world. Okay, but I mean, there, it's not all fun and games. No. We worry about deep fakes. Sure. Photoshop changed the landscape in terms of images and how yes. much you could trust those. And I find that with any image, whether it's made by one of these AI generators or not, already people are putting a filter on everything. I don't know if I can believe that video. I don't sure. know if I can believe that video. How is that changing the political landscape? How is this technology changing the world? So it's obviously going to be used. I mean, there's a huge amount of growth of deep fakes. You know, just in a couple of years, we've gone from a few tens of thousands of deep fakes to like nearly a million deep fakes out on the internet. That's becoming video, it's becoming prevalent in terms of propaganda, in terms of simple mimetic sort of information out there and social. We're at the sharp end of the spear. We're the people that can determine whether something feels real or isn't real. Countries like Finland are teaching their populations how to determine whether something is misinformation or a deep fake. I think that we owe it to ourselves to be the higher sense and intelligence to work that out. And that all these people that are pushing like this bile and, and, and useless information out there to try and shift opinions um, will eventually be killed by our sensibility and our intelligence, because the future is human intelligence, not artificial intelligence. We'll leave it on that vision of the future. Nick Badminton, thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much.